Hello, my name is Peter Parthis and welcome to New Rip Workshop. Now this is the second video about sorting this garage section out so that it can take a car. Now, in the old days, when I used to drive cars in and out of garages, I used to do things like this, which is have a, a tennis ball dangling from the ceiling and when the windscreen hit the tennis ball, I knew I had to stop. Now, that worked well in our last garage because there was a solid brick wall at the far end and I put some uh, foam and polystyrene there so that if I did overshoot a tiny bit uh, there would be just a few inches of uh, forgiveness uh, before uh, any damage was done. But in this garage I've got drywall at the end there and I really don't want to put any pressure on it at all. So I've come up with another scheme and it's a pair of chocks and that's really what this video is about how I went about making the chocks. Now there are a pair of these and the idea is that the car comes along here it mounts this flat area here and then its wheel uh, cannot go any further because it meets this chock piece here and that is the same radius as the car wheel and therefore it's a, a, a good fit. And having it the same radius of the car wheel means that with the weight of the wheel here and the car going forward, it's not putting any uh, ridiculous strain on the construction of this simple chock. And there are two of these, one on the right and one over there on the left. Now my rather nice garage floor, which is uh, here, uh, which has been painted, which you saw in the previous video. The front wheels of the car are not going to be sitting on that at all because they're on this piece of plywood. However, it was suggested to me by a gentleman in Australia who didn't wish to give me his uh, full name or didn't want it to be published uh, that uh, I should also have something uh, underneath the wheels at the back. And I've set that up and I'll show you now. And I really am grateful uh, to this gentleman if you look through the comments to my first video about transforming this garage, doing the floor, etc. Uh, you'll see his comment where he recommended putting something here. Because when the car sits on garage floor paint for any length of time, the wheels can uh, adhere, particularly if the wheels are warm or hot from a long journey, can adhere uh, to uh, the paintwork on the floor. So I've got these uh, little strips of rubbery stuff here. Uh, you could use anything, a bit of thin plywood would do. And they seem to, and I, with my tests I've done so far, not need to be fixed down in any way. They seem to be pretty static, so that's good. Now I have put a centre line through here because as one gets older, it, it, every little bit helps. And <laughs> it's a good idea to make sure you end up putting the front wheels in those chocks. Now before I start the, the build process for these chocks, let me just show you a demonstration of them in action. I had to move it down to this part of the workshop because I couldn't get the camera at that end to do a sensible shot. And now let's get into the construction. Now the stock I'm using for the base is some leftover bits of plywood. In fact, I, I'd go as far as to say it looks as though it's probably shuttering quality. Um, I'm going to use my Traxor cutting station to cut two pieces from this stock and these will form the base for our two chocks. I've got these clamps here because this piece of plywood is a little bit warped and also when I make this cut I'm risking it sort of tipping off the end there. So a clamp there to keep it on the bench and a clamp here uh, to overcome the warp. Now for the uh, cross pieces, uh, I'm going to be cutting some wood out of some leftover bits of 2x2. Two two. Um, I think it was leftover from when I made the shed. Right, the next stage is to make those curved bits, which those bits of batten fit on, which you've seen in the finished item. Now what I've done is I've got part of my Traxor cutting station where I've got a series of 3mm holes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the shape of those curved bits onto a piece of paper and that will allow me to transfer it to my first piece of wood. I'll then use that first piece of wood as my pattern. Uh, now, in order to do this, I'm lining this piece of paper up on the three millimeter holes and I'm gonna hold it down. And uh, 
Should be a fairly straightforward process, hopefully. Okay, and then uh, you may have seen me uh, use a little sort of compass trammel thing, which I, I've had for years. It's got a, a, a point there which you would stick in, uh, and both are adjustable. You can slide these wherever you want. And the, the other piece, it's got a pencil. So I've taken the pencil piece off, and I've got a piece of wood here. So what I've done is I've drilled a three millimeter hole here, and then here I've drilled a four millimeter hole because that's a slightly thicker bit of kit. And um, that will allow me to draw the circle. Now the radius for this, my tires are 20 inches in diameter, so it says on the spec. Uh, and so the radius is 10 inches, which is 254 millimeters. Now my bits of batten that go across, are 20 millimeters thick. So in other words, I now need to draw uh, a line which is 274 millimeters in radius. So that's what that distance is. So I'm gonna choose a hole just here. So there's my curve. Now we don't need all of this, but uh, we're going up to a point somewhere up there. Uh, this is the original baseline I had and this is the curve at 274 millimeters in radius. Um, I've then, because our pieces of material are going to be 20 millimeters thick, I've then drawn this line 20 millimeters up from there. Because if you imagine, uh, we're going to have a um, series of batten pieces on here, 20 millimeters up. And that's got to correspond when it gets down to here to the actual flat base of the plywood. So if you can imagine now, this is the plywood and our batten is gonna fit onto here, like so. So that's the plywood base. And so the actual shape of our pieces, which are gonna take the batten is along there and along here. So that's where we must cut. In actual fact, I'm not going to cut, I'm going to fold this line. This line here, I'm going to fold because that will make it easier positioning this onto a piece of wood to do the copying. Uh, and uh, I drew this line in error here, by the way. Uh, and then 110 millimeters up from that line, the top of the plywood, I've drawn this line. And that will be the top of my pieces of wood. So my pieces of wood are 110 millimeters high. I'm now going to bend this here and cut that there. And that will be the former that we're gonna use. Right, I've now set this up for some repeat cuts. My stock is on this side. The piece that I'm cutting out is actually under the guide rail, uh, but it's kept in the right line with these extra large uh, discs which come with the fence. Now, you may have seen this in a previous video where I was doing the, uh, using this fence for the mitre station. Uh, this is my extension piece. That goes underneath the rail, and this is acting as my stop so I can do repeat cuts, and that's held in place nice and securely. And to set it up the first time, I had a pencil line on this piece of wood, got that all lined up, tightened the, the stop in place, and now I can do my repeat cuts. Right, that's all the pieces I need, ready for the next stage. Now I'm doing repeat cuts again, this time 200 millimeters long. Now I'm using uh, this extension piece, uh, which was actually designed for use at the mitre station, and it's 300 millimeters uh, extra, it's adding. So in order to cut 200, I've set this on 500, and all I do, push my piece of wood up against there, and start my repeat cuts. Right, now to mark these out, and in order to get this right, I've got this fold here, which helps me to get this in the right angle that way. Now, in order to set this up properly, uh, this point here has to be at that corner there, and that's the only sort of very slightly tricky thing to get right. 
But don't forget, this is not rocket science. This is just a bit of woodwork. That's that curve done. I'm going to cut this one out very carefully, and this one will be the master. I'll write it on there. And then uh, pass that uh, profile onto all those others. Cut those two. Shouldn't take long. That's that, that's all of those done. Now, you may be wondering why these front pieces are so large. And the rationale for this is as follows. Now, I'm gonna have uh, these pieces set out evenly across here, and then these cross pieces joined on. Everything will be glued. And uh, there's enough space here for the, the actual car wheel to sit on this uh, once it's reached its stop. And so now I'm going to do the layout for attaching these pieces to the two uh, pieces of plywood. Uh, this gadget incidentally is a precision T-square, I think it is, by Incra, and I bought this from the Woodworkers Workshop here in the UK, and I use it a lot, and I've got a smaller one, I use that a lot as well. So that's all the holes drilled and countersunk, now I've just got to glue it together. That one. And now we're going to put the slats on the front here. Now this first one, it's important to get this right because it will dictate where all the others go. So I'm going to slide this along so it's touching these pieces and then just turn it like that. So that's where the first one's going. of the middles. That's that bit done. And you can see now that's a, a reasonably smooth curve using this, this method and certainly okay for a tire to go against. And it's not going to be putting the weight of the car on this area. It's just a stop. Uh, I've got to put a little fillet piece in here next and then I've got to uh, make some arrangement for smoothing off that edge there. So I'm going to leave that glue to go off now. So I'm just going to break this edge a bit just to make it a bit uh, softer on the drive of the car as it goes over it. Well that's this first one done now. Yeah I'm happy with that and eventually I'll need to drill some holes in this, probably two there, two there, and one each side at the back. But um, I think it's time to test this now. Well, that's it. The chocks are in place. They're screwed down. Uh, I've got my uh, bits of uh, rubbery stuff back here for the rear wheels. So this is now ready to take the car anytime I feel it needs to come in. But I might leave Wilson here just to give me an indication that I'm about to hit those chocks. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>